Aboriginal artists like Clifford Possum and Jackal Jari often represent the land from aerial views, looking down from above like a map, drawing in sites of spiritual and cultural significance. This 1904 work by Frederick McCubbin reflects on the hardship of early settler life. In the foreground of this triptych, or set of three, the figures tell a sad story from left to right, but in the background we see the changing face of Australia. From initially dense bush with a single makeshift caravan to a small clearing with a simple shack appearing, and finally more clearing has taken place and we can see down to the bay where a whole town is emerging. By 1930, artists like Grace Cossington Smith document the development of major landmarks and engineering projects which became an iconic part of the urban Australian landscape. By the 1960s, artists like Geoffrey Smart paint the Australian city as a concrete jungle where you have to look very closely to see any signs of life. Figures in his paintings are awkward and feel dropped into the landscape rather than belonging to it. Artists like Howard Arkley, particularly active in the 80s and 90s, paint suburban Australia, the everyday landscape. He uses bright colours and patterns to make it appear kitsch. Our questions are based on the Akara visual arts viewpoints. You may however need to conduct more research or draw your own conclusions by looking at the source images again. For this project we need to take a photo of a local place that's important to us. We will also need some initial research like maps or images of the site from different angles, Google map images from above, satellite, we should also learn about the traditional arts making practice of Aboriginal people that lived here long before your site was established. Remember when you're taking photos at your site to take some close up ones as well. Small details like patterns in leaves, gravel on the ground, brickwork pattern. We start by tracing an image of our site using just a black marker and tracing paper. Make sure to use a thicker marker, not a fine liner. You may feel more comfortable using a ruler to get any straight line. I'm now going to scumble over the lines. Scumbling is also sometimes called dry brush. It involves using very little paint on a very dry brush. I usually wipe off the excess paint before I start, pressing just the tip of the brush on the paper and making a small circular motion. I scan my tracing paper and print it out larger on a more robust cartridge paper. I can now work back into it with watercolour. I'm using bright colours to really make it pop and in the style of the artist Harold Arkley. I don't want to worry too much about matching the colours to what are really there. Remember, brighter is better. I can make a speckled pattern in my watercolour by sprinkling salt on while it's still wet. To render or detail my image, I can use a combination of lots of different techniques. So putting salt back on it we already looked at, draw back into it with coloured pencils, there are transfer techniques, stencils, frottage, stippling, see what else you can come up with. Our goal is to communicate through the rendering process lots of information about our site. We want the viewer to know not only what it looks like, but also the textures and how it's changed over time. The first technique option is drawing in with coloured pencils, using the same colour or a different colour to the base watercolour underneath. Complementary or opposite colours are often very effective for this. Technique two we're looking at is a transfer. I've printed a satellite view of the town and I'm taping an area that I don't want to get transfer on. I spray the image with crystal clear varnish. I'm making sure to do this step outside. Then I'm going to flip it over and scribble on the reverse with a pencil to transfer the image. Stencils can be made out of any material like lace that has lots of holes in it. Or alternatively you can cut your own stencils out with a Stanley knife very carefully. Use a stencil brush that has a flat end and then dab straight up and down. You can also use a variety of different implements to apply acrylic paint to your design. But try and find designs and images and patterns that have some sort of relationship to Frottage or patterns made through rubbings is something you might have done in primary school with coins. And it's a good method for developing patterns. You can use objects like leaves or rocks that you've collected at the site or things like this texture map that simulates a pattern that's similar to those found at the site. In this class we use the glow and grow method. First discuss in pairs of, or groups of three. Often your peers can find things in your artwork that you didn't notice yourself because you're just that little bit too close to it. Your final written evaluation should include elements of the conversation you had with your friends. 
What did you learn from that? But we're also discussing how well we went at representing our site. This could include how it looks, so the visual appearance of it, but also picking out and identifying those little details and patterns. Have you captured the feel of the place? Have you communicated things?